listening to The Cooler. With me, Rebecca Berman. My television broadcast, The Cooler, is set to air in 2016, but I just could not wait. So thanks to Igloo and my sponsored Cooler, we were able to create a modern-day talk show with a colossal Igloo Cooler as its centerpiece. The Cooler's contents are commonly revealed to the guests as it relates to them. So what is in The Cooler? Stay tuned. You're about to enter The Cooler. Welcome to the cooler, everyone. It is such a beautiful sunny day out today. I'm very happy about that. And um, I just want to tell you guys, the cooler is my new talk show where I have a colossal cooler and I pull different fun things out of it as I'm speaking to my different guests and the stuff relates to them. So, um, you know, today I had a little bit of a situation at home. I was driving my son to school in the morning and I realized I love Justin Bieber. It is hard to admit. I'm sure everyone out there is listening is now turning me off. But his la- latest album is so great. It's so fun. And um, the, the story with me is that I hear it. I turn it on. I crank it up. And then I start to get into my Bieber mode. It's too late to say sorry. Da, 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 sorry. And my son turns the music off. He's like, that is so strange that you're listening to him. So, you know, there went my my Bieber outfit. But um, it's really hard to get to the point that I am too old for music, too old to sing in the car, and the reality has hit me that I'm a mom. So having said that, I needed to find something that was more inspiring in my life instead of my kids just tuning me out and shutting me off. So I have taken up the latest trend, meditation. So I go to this meditation class and this lovely uh, doctor lady who's a meditation expert, meditation doctor, I guess, um, she teaches us how to meditate. So what we do is we sit down. You're supposed to take your the hand that you write with or your, or your dominant hand. So I'm a lefty, of course, how great is that? So I, you take your thumb and your ring finger and you're supposed to put it over your nose. And on camera, I know this looks kind of funny. Here we go. Okay, so you're supposed to touch it very gently to your nose, not press on it. And then you're supposed to go make a noise that sounds like so hum as you're breathing in and out. And then you're supposed to close your eyes and your other hand that is not on your nose is sitting on your lap and it is open to the universe. So, <clears throat> um, for all of you out there who wanted to know what the secret of meditation is, when I go to the meditation class, and I hope no one from the class is actually watching right now, because it's usually at night and I'm exhausted, and I start with that so hum thing in the class and we're sitting in a circle, and before I know it, I am asleep. You know that thing when you're like, Whoa, like you have to like kind of hit yourself because you just fell asleep. So that's usually what happens to me once I start meditating. But um, but I think what it's supposed to do is like, according to this doctor, it's supposed to get into the rest of your life and make you feel very relaxed. And when you're in stressful situations, the other thing she taught me, which I did try at home um, on all the people who yell and scream in my house. And, you know, I'm the quiet one in my house. So um all, to all those people, she said to me, when they start in with you and you feel stressed, you're supposed to say to yourself, but I'll say it out loud so you guys can hear it, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I was very confused when she first told me I'm supposed to say that because I'm like, what's going to happen when I'm starting thank youing, when I'm really angry and just, you know, want to quietly yell at everyone? So uh, she's like, it'll change the whole dynamic of the situation. You'll see it's going to be the greatest, you know, experience, how it'll really change the aura in the room. So, uh, you know, I'm really like believing in this stuff now. And uh, I tried it. And I got to tell you, everyone at home, you must, must, must try it when you are in a stressful situation. Um, So remember, you have to say thank you, thank you, thank you. But you have to say it to yourself. So um, I have a couple of amazing guests here today, one of which is Dress. He is a legendary rapper with um, a band called, I don't know if it's really called a band, but with Black Sheep. And I'm so excited for you guys to meet him. Um, And one of my other guests today is the wonderful Joan Rivers. 
Now, I know Joan has passed on, but she is left here with a person and in spirit. And our guest, who is Joan, I, I'm, not, I'm not actually sure she wants anyone to know, but um, when she comes on, oh, wait, there she is. Oh, my God. Oh, get off of me. <laughs> It, her name is Linda Axelrod, and she is really Joan Rivers. So um, can't wait for us to chat with her. So let's see if we can get Dress on the phone yet. How are we doing with Dress coming on the phone? Dress? Hey, what's going on? Hey, how are you? Oh, there you are. Cool. How's it going? Um, hey, how are you doing? Good. Everything's well. Good to see you. Good to How see you, you too. I know it's been a, a little while since we last met. It has. It has. Yeah. Um, and I know you have a lot going on. What can so, you can you tell me? What I, I just have to like roll back so everyone kind of knows Black Sheep and what went on for you in the '90s. Can you just give us a little bit of your rapper background? Well, real quickly, um, started in the '90s. Me and my partner, Mr. Long. Released uh, a, a hip hop was called a hip hop classic these days. An album called The Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. Followed it up with uh, another critically acclaimed album called Nonfiction. Uh, at that time, me and my partner kind of went separate ways. I've, I've been holding down the Black Sheep Dress banner these days, and um, I kind of still, you know, put out albums. I have a slew of albums I've released independently since then, and uh, as well as I travel the world doing shows as Black Sheep Dress. I've actually started a new venture which is called Evertan, me and Jerobi from A Tribe Called Quest. We formed a duo called Evertan, which is native spelled backwards. Oh, I like and, uh, that. Yeah, yeah, we're actually releasing a, a, a new single uh, February 23rd with, with a video and and, and, the, and the single will be available on uh, my, my band camp page under the uh, Pool of Genius banner, which is the name of the independent label, Pool of Genius. So uh, February 23rd, check out the new stuff. And are you well, gonna and dress? Are you also gonna be touring with that? Oh yeah, without question. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's it's a nice combination of uh, me, the new stuff, me and Jerobi, as well as the old classic stuff, the you know the the original Black Sheep stuff I do, um, and 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 a bunch of stuff in between. So yeah, stay on the road. I mean, yeah, all around the world, literally. Right. That that is gonna be excellent. And I know you have some kids at home who are kind of talented, also. They sounds like they. They're in your fight. They, they take after their dad. Ah, well, thanks a lot. Um, my older boy, Honor, he's the lead singer for a punk rock group called Cerebral Balls. He, I actually hear him in the back right now. <laughs> and uh, my youngest boy, who I'm about to go pick up from school, is uh, named Sidney Max. He just released a single that was pr produced by DJ Premier called Here Come the Birds. And it's something that uh, Angry Birds Rovio got behind. And we partnered up and did something, you can catch it, catch his video on a YouTube or pick up a single on iTunes. Right. And, I, uh, something for kids. Well, every kid that plays Angry Birds, which is every kid. And uh, yeah, you know, just just staying active and doing what I love and um and sharing it with the family. Like it's it's a, it's a good, it's a beautiful thing. Yes, I, I see that they're fo following in your footsteps. That video with your son Sydney Max, um, I don't know if we oh. have it, but people uh. definitely should um, look it up. It was hysterical. And oh, yeah. but I oh, that's there. so there cute. <laughs> yeah, that's my dude. He's 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 quite the MC as well. Actor. You, I mean, he's been in uh, the blacklist. He's been in several television commercials. He's uh, signed to Wilhelmina and uh, and he's quite the MC. Like I said, he, he stays pretty, pretty busy. And you also have another video online that you took of him at home, I guess. And he was like playing with the little angry birds and you were trying to talk to me. He's like, Dad, I'm not done rapping yet. I'm not done with the song. <laughs> and it was just so cute. Um, and if uh, I don't know if we have it with us today, but uh, you guys should check it out because it's very, very adorable. And it also was like a slice of home life, too, which was really fun. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's kind of funny. At this point, my kids' videos get more hits than mine do. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I, one of the highlights of my career is opening it up for my older boy, Honor, for his band. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, just seeing them doing what they do. Like, he's literally in Spin Magazine, Rolling Stone, and things of that nature, tours probably more than I do. It's it's such a great, great feeling to see the kids embrace, you know, kind of where I come from and, and take it to another level. It, it's such a blessing and where so you're opening for honor and you guys are touring together is that well now this was just one particular show this is okay. a show in connecticut 
Um, it was a one-off, you know, last year sometime. As a matter of fact, it might have even been the year before. And but just to say, you know, for that to have happened was just a highlight for me, you know what I'm saying, to see that, yes. you know, how people react to my kid and, and, and you know, and his group. They're phenomenal. They're literally that, phenomenal. That's an, a chance to check out that is such an amazing moment. feeling as a parent. Yeah. And instead yeah, of your kid turning the radio off on you. Like, you know they, like the yeah. kids do on me. <laughs> yeah, I heard. I, I, you know, yeah, you know, you, you, you got to find someone between Justin Bieber and, and I guess, uh, and Black Sheep. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, how old's your? How old are your kids? Um, my oldest boy is twenty-seven. Oh, okay. Uh, you look way, way, way too young to have a twenty-seven-year-old. And I've met you in person, and you look young in person too. <laughs> I mean, just to say, um, I, you know, I got off to a young start. Okay. Um, I was 19 and, uh, and, and, oh, wait, we're losing your dress. And, uh, uh, his mom was 29. Wait, we were, we were so losing I kinda, you. I kind of got cool. I, was, I, was, I, was, I got started young with an older woman, I guess. <laughs> you know now? now we're getting the real dirt dress. Okay, let me hear okay. it. <laughs> And ha- and how old is Sydney Max? Sydney is nine. Oh, okay, yeah, he's yeah. he's funny. He what a cute kid. And how's the oh, how's the modeling going? Um, for him or for who? Oh yeah, for all of you, for your whole family. <laughs> okay, every, every, everything is really really good. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, all kinds of opportunities are presenting themselves. You know, behind right. the kids. Like literally, you know, me even kind of documenting them over the years, just as far as, you know, via social network or, you know, pictures at home, what have you, is prompting me even to start screenwriting and possibly writing a, a television show. I have a whole pop life uh, kind of idea that I'm, I'm kind of toying with. So you never know. You might wind up seeing something even a little further into what goes on around here. You, you know, are I, a very talented man. I am very impressed. Uh, uh, <laughs> what um, sure. dress? So if anyone wants to look for you, I mean, I know you kind of said it during our interview, but just give me like a rundown of all the places people can find you on social media and or any upcoming, um, you know, concerts or things like touring that you'll be doing. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm always, you know, doing spot dates and tours all over the world. Literally, I have a gig this, uh, tomorrow in Long Island. Um, but just to say, um, catch me on Twitter at uh, Dress Black Sheep. Catch me on Instagram at Black Sheep Dress. Um, my Bandcamp page, which is where this single coming out February 23rd is going to be available, is called Pool of Genius. You can hear some of my latest sounds and some free giveaways at uh, my SoundCloud page, which is Pool of Genius as well. Okay. Um, and uh, which is the name of my independent label, Pool of Genius. And um, yeah, definitely, you know, everybody listening, reach out. Thanks for tuning in. Rebecca's phenomenal. I know this show is going to just blow out the water. Rebecca, I just want to put a, a bug in your ear. Every what? successful, every successful host needs a co-host. Oh, and dress up. My seat is waiting for you right here. See, saying, there it is. A, a young, you know, a middle-aged black co-host. I think, I think what, we wait, wait nice there are plenty. You, it, I, I have to say. I don't think it matters the age. It matters the determination <laughs> that if you really want to do it, you got to go for it. And dress, as I said, my seat is open. I love talking to you today. And um, I loved also meeting you in person. You're a fun awesome. guy. You've got some good stories and some talented children. I appreciate the love, Cecilia. And thanks for having me. Okay. Um, I hope to come back soon and tell you some further adventures. Okay. Thanks, dress. Take care. Have a good rest of the day. Glad you too. Um, so that was great. Thank you, Dress, so much for being on, a guest on The Cooler. And now I have to introduce her. She might just introduce herself. Uh, Joan Rivers. Woo! Hello, hello, Can hello, we hello, talk? Hello, 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 hello. Let me come around here and give you a hello, hug. Hello, hello, how, how are, are you? you? How Good. are you? Mwah. 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 You look fabulous. Gorgeous. Oh, I Thank love this. Show oh. the booties. All right, I've got to figure out how to get... Oh, come on. Look at all my gorgeous, yoga. Gorgeous, gorgeous, you little fabulous. Fabulous, little right? Okay. Fabulous. That was always fabulous. fun showing off yeah. my shoes. Dre is adorable. Dre, his name is Dre- Dress. Dress. Yes. Whatever, Dre, Dress. <laughs> Who cares? Oh, let me just tell you something. The seat is mine. Oh, thank God. The seat is mine. Thank God you showed up, oh. Joan. Oh, what? Did you think a little thing like death would keep me away? 
No, I actually, I actually didn't. So that oh, was on. really. Take a look at this face. Take a look. It's all biodegradable. I saved the parts. I went to the taxidermist. And I'm back. Woo! Woo! Oh. I am so happy that you came today here because I needed a guest like you on my show. Oh, good. Thank you. So, I love being here. What? So, uh, do I call you Joan? You can call me anything you like. I don't care. You can call me Joan. You can call me Linda. Oh, okay. Just don't call me RJ. All right. <laughs> I won't. I, uh, RJ. Wait, I lost that one. Never I'm mind. Laughing. Oh, yeah. You're too young. That's You're why I lost young. that one. That's why. Hap happily, I'm finally too young for something. Um, okay, but I have to tell you, we have something in common that I am going to pull out of the cooler. Oh. It is somebody that you love, that you that you have in all your notes, that you've worked with before, and um, I had the pleasure of being a very young person working with this person on a couple of movies. And I think that they uh, you called them him rather a Warner Brothers produce executive producer. So do you know who I'm talking about? This is Joan. This is your life. No, I may have called him a lot of other names, but I'm not sure if I called him this. <laughs> or maybe this is Linda. This is your life. I'm not sure. <laughs> Are you talking about Mike? Yes, Mike Tadros. Oh, Mike Tadros. Fabulous man. Love him, love him, love him. Gorgeous wife. Gorgeous, Georgia. Her, mwah, she's out there. Beautiful. She's a doctor. Oh, she is. Yes, I, she, I she wrote a book. Really? Oh. I didn't even know she could read. Wow. But, uh, <laughs> you know, oh, no, no. She's adorable, adorable. And Mike is a very down-to-earth man, and I love him. When he was doing Sherlock Holmes, I begged him for the part of the dog. And he said, he no, say? Joan, you don't have enough talent. I, I said, watch that. Earth, earth. He said, you have to play dead. Talk to my old boyfriend. I'm telling you, I could audition for that part. Yeah, well, I'm surprised he didn't give it to you. Yeah. I mean, he should have just given you a part, you know, right off the bat. He kept promising. What else can I say? Right. What can I say? They all say that. All right, so now I got some other things for you, Joan. Yes. Which I did find that funny that we both knew the same person. That was like one of the you first people my... I worked for. Yes, when I, I worked on a cocktail, I think, or masquerade when I was a young, young production assistant. And he was the production manager on those movies. Oh, look and how you both grew. <laughs> oh, it's true. It's true. Exactly. You're, you're doing so well. He's oh, doing yes. Well, yes, I'm sure he is. Gorgeous place in the Hamptons. Okay. Oh. Joan, and I'm sure you're there all the time. Oh, well, it's better than being where I was. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, you know, I love when people say, oh, she's in a better place now. No, in the Hamptons, you're in a better place, idiots. Please. I couldn't agree more. So also coming out of the cooler, you know, I, ju I just need you to tell me a little bit about some of your uh, skits. So one of them being Coffee Talk. Yes. That so was for Geico Insurance. Oh, okay. Yes. Can, can you do like a bit from it or you don't, you, well, that's it, not, it's been a you don't while. roll like that. If you remember the commercials and um, at the end of the commercial, she would go, am I smiling? Am I smiling? I can't feel my face. And they wanted to do them in-house for corporate. I did all the in-house commercials as Joan. And I actually do a couple of other celebrities. So I did a couple of other ones. I don't know if you're showing it right now, but I think you are. Yes, we are. Oh, oh right. that's hysterical. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sharon Carbone played Linda Myers, and she was fabulous. I love her. And uh, it was just so much fun. They let me ad lib some things. Of course, they took out a lot of things, but it was a terrific, terrific time. I did a lot of, uh, I guess, promo work for Joan herself, Miss Rivers. Oh, you did? So yes. you, you really knew her? Oh, yes, yes. That's yes. great. What was that like, uh, spending time with her? She was fabulous. She was just fabulous. The, the woman that you see on screen or on the uh, stage, you know, she's a pit bull with lipstick. Right. Tell the truth. <laughs> oh, come on. But when you met her backstage, she was this articulate, brilliant, refined woman. I just loved her, and she was very supportive. She would always be, I would show her pictures and say, what do you think of this costume? What do you think of that? And she'd say, I like this. I like this. That is and, great. And even if she was doing a current joke, which is very rare, 
Right. Very rare. Because uh, one night I said to her, how do you stay so current? How do you stay so current? And I said, it's so hard. And she said, just talk about what's happening. And I, and I said, it's just, and I write a lot of my own openings. And thank God I have this personality and sense of humor similar to Joan's. So uh, I can write in her fashion. Right. And um, she was on stage that night and she was talking about her hair products. And because right. she sells all, you know, the makeup, the okay. perfume and, and these hair clips that you clip in extra hair. And she took the hair clip out of her hair and she said, here, use this. And I said, oh, my God, you're, you just used it for tonight. It's so current. She said, use it. Use it. I said, I'll use it. But now I have it in a place of honor. I don't take it out. I have her. You have it framed. Where is it framed in, on your wall? Oh, yes, yes. I have it sitting up there. I tell everybody it's from my mustache. But uh, I have it sitting there. I have her perfume she gave me sitting there. I, I, I have. Oh, that's neat. I have the, the book, unfortunately, I hate to say, from her funeral. Oh, and, that's um, sad. It was very, very sad. Did you go? You attended it? Yes. And uh, it was very heartbreaking. I will say this. It felt as if I lost a family member and after this is I don't know how funny this is going to sound okay uh oh this is gonna be good <laughs> I that afternoon I yeah. was sitting and visiting someone in the hospital who right. just had a double mastectomy and she couldn't lift her arms and someone texted me your girl died <gasps> no and I went oh oh and I was crying and the poor woman who just had this double mastectomy went Come here, I'll hold you. I'll um, hold you. <laughs> and I thought, there's something very wrong with this. <laughs> and so, of course, she comforted me, which makes no sense. Right. And my phone was ringing off the hook. Well, it's your whole, it's your whole persona. So and, your person left. And people were texting me. I got condolence cards, Aww. Facebook condolences. And I was riding home after I had left um, my friend and... I was getting one call after another and I was trying to answer them and saying, yes, yes, yes. And I did this commercial a while back for Nissan Motors uh -huh. and the director called me and left this message on my, I, I didn't want to take any more uh, calls because as I was driving, I was getting more upset and more upset. Right. As I can only imagine. And I thought, I'm not going to listen to this. But then I saw the telephone number and I said, oh, it's a director. Let me call him back. And I listened, we're well, not calling him back, let me listen to his message. And he said, Linda, I know that Joan died and it made me think of you immediately. <gasps> wow. And I want to tell you, you are the closest thing to Joan there is. Oh my God. And you need to keep her legacy going. Wow. So just keep them laughing. And I put down the phone and I had to pull over on the side of the road and I cried and I cried. Oh, that's so upsetting cried. and so intense all at the I, same time. I just could not believe anybody left me that uh but it it meant a lot to me right it meant a lot and i i kept the cards that people sent me and the emails um it, it may sound model to everyone else but she was very special to me you know i've i've met other people who had relationships with her um on different you know professional levels and they too are just as devastated as you sound. I mean, I know you really are an amazing impersonation of her. So, um, but I just want you to know, it sounds like she was really an unbelievable I loved person. Her. I loved her and she was very generous. And uh, the first time I had to go out and do a show as Joan mm -hmm. after she passed, right. I really did not want to go. Right. I was so depressed. I thought, I want to stay home. Why don't these people leave me alone? And it must have been about two weeks after she passed. Right. And I went in. And this was a private event, and I went in and I performed. And this was what was the first thing that struck me. What? When Joan was alive, and I would walk through the city dressed in costume because I'd be going to a gig and people would be screaming, Joan, Joan, and I'd be yell back, shut up, get out of my way. You know, and people would just think it's me. And they'd come up and they would talk to me and take right. pictures and you know, right. take the time to get to the gig. Right. I realized that when I walked in, people realized that I was an impersonator. Right. Because before that, for some reason, I was her alter ego. Right. I was Joan. Right. I got stuck on the LIE and the guy, in, uh, and I'm sitting in traffic, and the guy on the other side is scream, screaming to me, Joan, you're stuck in traffic. 
you're stuck in traffic. And I screamed back, shut the hell up and move on. <laughs> and he just like broke up. <gasps> right. Because you're really Joan. And they, and I, you know, because you kept thinking of yourself that way. Right. So when I got to, after the gig, I got back in my car and I started to cry again. And I said, I can't do this anymore. It's just too heartbreaking. And um, I had to leave there to go make just an appearance at this new club that was opening in Staten Island. And right. I said, yes, I would show up to support them. And I walked in. <laughs> you talk about freaky. People were coming up and crossing themselves in front of me. Oh, my God. Saying, rest in peace, Joan. Rest in peace. <laughs> Oh my God, I can't even believe like how you have to oh. function every day being this person who's it here was, but not here. And it was like very difficult and I, I went home and I thought, I'm not doing this anymore. And then a couple of weeks passed and I had this stand-up show. I couldn't have had a nicer audience. Right. I walked in, I, they introduced me, the lights were out, the lights came up and I was standing there and the audience went crazy oh my god crazy and i and i did and you did your did your my, my your bid and they just screamed i couldn't have had a more accepting and loving audience and every joke i told they screamed they yes. screamed and joan uh, joan i mean linda i mean joan right, I do answered you <laughs> joan, do linda. you do Call you Ralph, it doesn't do you matter. have her same uh, sets that she would do, like for her stand-up routines, or you have your I, own, but you're able to? I, I improv a lot. Mm -hmm. I write my own beginnings. I do a couple of scene, uh, a couple of sets that maybe are old classics. Of right. Joan. Right. You know, if I, if God wanted me to clean, He would have put diamonds on the floor. I'll grow up. You do what I do every year. You, you call the police. You say. I've been robbed. They come over. They dust. You know, you do little things like that because they do want to hear the classics. Right. I open and I do a lot of things of my own, like um, uh, I talked about Caitlyn Jenner. And of right. Course, oh, you, you did. Oh. Oh, oh, well, oh, oh man. I oh, her. boy. I support her. I think it's about time the Kardashians had a real lady in the family. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yes. All right. Yes. All those she's Kardashian the, fans the out there. Perfect size, Caitlyn, to be the stand-in for Chloe when they do the Kardashian life story. <laughs> I was so upset. I was so upset when Chris and Chris is a very good friend of mine. Yes. When she told me that they they were getting divorced and there were rumors of another woman until Caitlyn said, I am the other woman. <laughs> so, oh, come on, tell the truth. Tell what? The truth. Tell the truth. Tell what the truth? truth? Wouldn't you like to recall all those weedy cereal boxes and airbrush boobs on them now? Oh, my God. Can oh, you God. imagine if Caitlyn took over and made those weedy boxes who she is today and they redistributed them? That would be oh, hysterical. I, I would love to see her hook up with Chaz Bono. I think it would be great. What a transgender po poster you, that would be. You have you have some really good ideas. One last question for you. What, that's it? What is Melissa? That's it? I come back all this way. I dig what? myself up and what? that's it. Wait, what? Somebody's trying to reach me and I definitely need my glasses. Something sponsor. about a sponsor. All right, so you want to hang out for the sponsor speech? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Okay. I, I, I'm uh, hanging out anywhere. All right, great. Um, when it comes to media relations, TRS 24-7 PR will tell your story to major media outlets to help you expand your brand. Whatever your story is, they will create an attractive, well-written scenario that brings attention your way. TRS 24-7 PR does not entertain, does not just entertain media relations. They can help you build your personal or your business brand. If you're launching a new product or have an album release, we will get you in front of the right people at the right time. The gang at TRS 24-7 PR will also manage your social media accounts for you and help you build your online omnipresence. The team at TRS 24-7 PR will also come to your business and educate you and your staff, that's cool, on the do's and don'ts of social media. I need these people. You can find them at TRS 247PR.com or on Twitter at TRS 247PR. Give them a call. They are amazing. Okay. Woo! All right. Very nice. Very nice. They, are, they are such a great sponsor.
Okay. Oh, I love that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh. All right, Joan, here we go. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Who's here? Well, all right, I'll come by. I'll, I'll come call. Over to okay, you. all right. Oh, look who's here. Oh, look who's oh, here. So good to oh, see shut you, up. Rebecca. Mwah. 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 Oh, did oh. we do that one already? Uh, what, uh, why? You didn't no, want to I, kiss me? No, I don't I, be I, We just greeted we greeted already. You look yes. fabulous in your oh, red carpet outfit. Oh, please, please, please. You think this is Botox? It's formaldehyde. <laughs> it works better than Botox. You think these are my breasts? They're my knees. Oh. Everything's been pulled oh. up. <laughs> oh, please. You don't know yeah. how hard it is to be an older woman. Uh, oh, gosh. I, you I, don't I, have to worry. You, I, I have to ask you, whose jewels are you wearing? Mine. Mine. I was going to say my ex-boyfriend's balls, but no. It's it, This is mine. It's mine. I work like a dog for this. If Melissa would only get a job. Oh, <laughs> unlike you. Unlike you. That's Look right. Melissa could, be, Melissa could be my co-host after dress. Yes. Yeah, thank God. Oh. Thank God. That would be a great idea. And who who are you wearing oh, it's, today? I don't know. It was some old uh, Polish woman that gave me this, Badgley Mishka. Oh. Uh, uh, you know. She's a famous fashion designer. Yes, yes. I did I did their fashion shows. They're very nice guys. I love them. And but who? And am I interviewing you or are oh. you interviewing oh, me? Oh, I, I know shut that. Shut the hell <laughs> up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I don't have this on my card, so oh, I'm just you making don't it have, up. I don't need cards. I don't need cards, Miss Brainiac. Well, I made up these cards, and I made up the things I wrote on the card. Yeah. But the producers want you to interview me, so let's yes. say, let's yes. go to town. Yes. Come on. Let's go to town. Who am I wearing? You, yes. Who are you wearing? I am wearing something from the year all from of my girlfriends out there will laugh at me because they know how I am. The year, I think it was like... 1999 or something like that. Um, yeah, but I, I think that's where I got this in that year. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really don't know who made it. And um, you good. Know. And, good. and next time I come, I'm gonna have to dress like you and my. It, it's who better. Are you, who are you wearing? Badgley Mishka. You yes, need to stop. Badgley Mishka. Yes, you have that very comfortable. And I have Casual. my shoes on. My J. Are Crew shoes. shoes. I love. J. I Crew. love. I love the shoes. Little roach killers. Oh my yes. god. Yes. Yes. And their skins. Look. You can you put the leg up? Oh again? my god. It has to go up again. Look, this is like Pilates, my yoga class. Pilates. Oh look at the. Aren't Woo! They adorable. It looks like my dead dog Spike. Oh, they're just adorable. <laughs> I love Pilates. You could do Pilates in a handicap uh, Wait, so, bathroom. All right. So I know you're supposed to be interviewing me. <laughs> Yes, I, I so what? tell me, this is one of your first TV shows, broadcast. Yes, yes, this is, this is one of my first TV shows, The Cooler, the and, cooler. Uh, and it's, you know, I pick funny things out of it to chat with you about. Oh, great, great. And, and how long have you been in the business? Oh, many, many Two years. Weeks. Two many weeks. years. Wait, you're giving me another, oh, this looks like my vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have a battery in it? Oh, I've been in the business many years. Oh, no. Like, like how like long? Three. Three weeks? Yes. That's what I thought. You're yeah. so young, Lucky. Oh, you're so funny. You're I know young. I am young. Yes, That's you are. That's why I look young. Yes. Well, it, it, it's a it good reason. Out. Good reason. Good reason. And so, wait, you talked about your son? Yes, I have a son. I have some daughters. And um, they're all various You have ages. a daughter as well? Two, two daughters. Two daughters. They're various ages. You slut! What the hell have you been doing? <laughs> you tramp! Are and you sure your name's not jo Kardashian? Jo <laughs> jo oh, please, jo you're such please tramp! Be careful the what Kardashian. You said. My mom's in the audience today. Hello, mom. Hello, mom. <laughs> Mwah. Oh, the Kardashians are such tramps. Oh, are they horrible? Oh, please. Oh, please. The only reason they, they wear are... panties. The only right. reason they wear panties is to keep their ankles warm. Wait, have you seen? Oh, stop. <laughs> More men, more men have landed on the Kardashians than the airstrip in Afghanistan. Please. Joan, I don't even have any comebacks for your good jokes. Oh, you don't have to. Oh, please, although, talk about although comebacks. I do, I do Should like... we talk about old men? Oh, oh please. please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Yeah. I can't even get a date. The men I date are so old. They're so old. To them, going all the way is getting to the bathroom on time. <laughs> it's the truth. Oh, one guy gave me a hickey. He left his teeth in my neck. Oh, oh, oh. And I love the way they say, I love the way they say that, 
you know, women get old, women get old. Are you kidding? Did you ever see an old nude, nude man sit down? It looks like he's making tea. No, I, I oh, actually please. haven't. <laughs> oh, please. But, you know, it's funny. You know what's interesting? What? Is that they can't cure cancer, they can't cure diabetes, heart trouble, but they have a little blue pill for erectile dysfunction. That is interesting. Yes, it it's is. It's funny how they oh, figured that one out, right? Yeah, oh, well, figure what out do what you really expect? really needs to be figured out. What did you expect? I Are wasn't you expecting kidding? anything, they, really. They take the little blue pill. Four hours. Four hours. The little wife comes home from her osteoporosis treatment, all dried out. He jumps on top of her. In, out, in, out. Oh, she's so dried out, he could start a forest fire. Oh, my oh, God. I, please, it's just terrible. But you don't have that problem, do no, you? No, I, I, no, I don't, because I'm very young. No, because you're young. I'm very you're young. You're young. Yes. I saw you yes. left a trail. Yes. You leave, oh, yes. You're fabulous. But you're fabulous. So Joan, I, yes. Wait, so now I have one other question for you. I know you're supposed to be interviewing me. I know. Who, Isn't it about me? Who does your hair and makeup? They are fabulous. If my mortician. <laughs> who the hell else? Me. I do it. I do it. Well, you know, you don't get much choice where I am now. So, I, yeah. and you know, it kind of freezes in the spot, and right. that's what I do. And it's kind, yeah. I, yes. I could see that. Yes, and but what, let and me see. I love your earrings. Oh, thank you. They're beautiful. Thank you. Yes. They're beautiful. Uh, yeah, Are they I, gold? They're real. They're real. Uh, they're real. Yeah. Oh, fab. And where did you get them? Who I gave them, them to you? I got them on the street from the vendor right outside. And they're real. Yes. Good, good. And there is a Santa Claus. Good God. Good God. It's a and good what, thing you're cute. Uh, yeah, it is. It, oh. it certainly is. And yeah. now, another question for you. Oh, yes. How was it meeting uh, the Jersey Boys? Were you in their show? Oh, yes. I opened for them. 1,200 people. Get out. That's great. 1,200 people. And they were fabulous. And the fellow that did Frankie was great. He came out. He was like four foot two. And high. What is it? Full so you were, you were actually, Joan Rivers was taller than him then. Yes, yes, yes this time right. I was finally taller than somebody else. <laughs> and um, what, and who else have you met? Uh, you did something with Paul Schaefer recently? Yes, or? I did a, uh, a, yes, a fundraiser benefit. Paul is very classy, very nice man. Love him, love his wife, Kathy. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful girl. And do you do any singing when you're with any of these people? Yes, sometimes if they ask me, I can do Hey Big Spender. Oh, you can? Let's oh, hear it. Sure. Wait, I, I'm sorry, I must hear you do that. Oh, uh, God, All I right. used to, I don't remember, I used, uh, last year I was singing Santa Baby, but I don't remember it now. Oh, okay. But it's I, your I, age, it really escaped you. Yeah, sometimes you, you, you forget things. Sometimes it's very convenient that you forget yes, them. It, yes, that but, is But, you know, it's like, the minute you walked in the joint, I could tell you were a man of, of distinction, distinction, a real big spender. Good looking. So, so refined, wouldn't you like, like to know, know what's going, going on in my mind? mind. So, so let me get right to the point. Boom, boom. I da, don't hit my... No, 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 no. So let me get right to the point. I don't crack my hip for every oh. guy I see. Hey, hey big, big spender. spender. Spend a little, little time, time with me. me. This brings me back to my auditioning for all the Broadway shows I used to do. Oh, on what shows were you in? Oh, I was in so many. Uh, Name one. Br Brigadoon. Brigadoon. Heather yeah, right. on the Hill. Uh huh. And was, no, is that this, was a is, song in Brigadoon. This was on Broadway, off Broadway, or off, off, off this Broadway, was, or in um, Long Island. I think this might have been in a sleepaway camp in the Adirondacks. <laughs> Big time. Big all time. All right. Please have a seat, Joan. Thank you. Thank you. You've really, you've really brightened up the cooler today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're I love welcome. being here. I love being here. And I love having you here. Oh, great. And now, my other questions for you, um, I, I really do think we've gone through many of them. Um, something about Sherlock Holmes? Oh, yes, we discussed Sherlock Holmes already. That was something that you uh, had done. I was interviewed done. Uh, by the Washington Post. Oh, you were? As, uh, after Joan had passed away. Wow. Uh, in, uh, you know, in the fall, and then it came out in, I think it was February. Right. And as the 
top Joan Rivers impersonator, and it was like a two-page spread in their feature section, which was oh, that's just excellent, in, unbelievable. And how long have you been Joan? <sighs> I actually started out doing other personalities, uh -huh. and somebody and this one client that I had repetitive work from called me one day and said, "We want." Joan Rivers. And I said, I don't do Joan Rivers. And they said, well, I said, I know other people I can recommend. I get a call back from them and they say to me, no, we like you. We want you. And I was like in a panic. I was in a panic. And uh, I thought, they said, you've got 30 days. And I 30 days to try to be Joan Rivers? Right. So I went, quickly went online, looked what she wore to one of the Oscars. And I don't mean to sound like I'm name dropping. I, I'm sorry. If no, because you're like not. That. You're certainly not. Um, I would never think that of Carol you. Carol Channing. Oh, you are? I had done uh, Marilyn okay. Monroe with her. And she you, these are all people who ha are are in the same state as Joan, as the real no, Joan. No, no, no. Carol is very well. She was just out in Palm Springs. Oh, okay. Okay. And um, at that time, I called her and I said, Carol, I have to do Joan Rivers, and I said, I don't know how to do her. I, I, I don't even look like her. And it was before Joan had some of her facial work done. Right. And lo and behold, Joan quickly, thank you, Joan, did this for me. Right. And had her face broadened. And, um, and it worked out so well for Carol you. Carol said to me, do you like her? And I said, I love her. And she said, then you'll be able to do it. It'll come to you. And so then I went in, you know, to the city. I found a wig. I had the costume, and I went. She was appearing at the cutting room at that time. Okay. And Steve is the owner, and I told him I was going to do Joan. Right. And oh, this is like you. Okay, I'm sorry. I was in the present day. You're. Uh, I. I apologize. I really have a lapse of memory today. Yeah. I have okay. No idea what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> but all I know is, uh, very nice. He sat me up at the very front of the stage. Right. And Joan did her entire show looking down at me, so I studied her makeup. Wow. And then I went home. <clears throat> And I did the wig and the clothes, and, and I didn't know whether to laugh or cry because I looked like her. Right. And uh, I get a call from She didn't know whether to laugh or cry either. Hey, listen, she spent $100,000 <laughs> to look like me. So um, then, I then, that Saturday was the, the gig, and I got a call from another agent who asked me if I could do the red carpet as right. that Friday before, and I thought, oh, God, dress rehearsal. Right, this is go. it. I said, yes, yes, I, I'll go. And I walked out onto the red carpet and everybody went, Joan! And I thought, that's it. And it just started to come. And, and then Saturday night, I was very comfortable. And that started it. Right. And uh, I'm glad it did because I, I don't think I enjoy anyone as much as I enjoy Joan. The, no, you certainly seem like I'm talking to Joan right now. She, I, I just loved her. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing. And what was it like when you first met her and you were dressed just like her? How was that? I I, I think well, of course I was, you know, stymied. Uh, you know, you're like, oh my god. You know, it's like you're you're looking at her and you and you don't know whether she's going to say, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> but, well, like you're prepared for her to say that, probably. You know, but here's the thing. I at least am basically her size. Right. Female. I mean, you have some of the guys that come out, they're like six foot four, 250 pounds, and they're impersonating right. her. So um, I feel that I, I'm doing a, a pretty decent tribute to her, and I, that's what I could hope for. I think that you are. You know. do, you, um, do you do any shows that are currently coming up, or are you've done them recently where well, you've been I, uh, re I just did stand up for the International Rotary uh, Organization uh, for... Macy's Rich Line Group, mm -hmm. her holiday party. Um, and so when you do a party like that, what do you do? Do you like go around and shake people's hands or do you just well, it, do a bit? You know, it depends. Some people can hire you just to do the red carpet and you interview them. You do a couple of jokes. They have they step and repeat behind you right. and they photo up with you. Right. That's and great. And then some people will want shows. Right. And I love that because. Right. Because you have a whole routine you do. I have, you know, a whole show, you know, right. I can do an hour and 10, I can do an hour and, you know, 50, you right. know, it doesn't matter. Right. And you can go out there and you can be Joan. Right. Now, you can be Joan to a certain point. I cannot say everything that Joan says and get away with it because they will kill me. <laughs> they will kill me. The first time I saw Joan, I looked like Colleen McCokin. 
<laughs> That's how I sat in the front row. Joan said things and talked about issues that happened, current ones, and I always have to peel them back. Right. Because, and here's the funny thing. Joan really never insulted anyone in the audience. She insulted celebrities who never even heard it. Right. So it was funny. Yet going out as Joan and... Uh, if I insult a certain celebrity and you can watch the shift in the audience, you know, they don't like it. Right. And it's like, did you hire Mary Poppins? <laughs> you hired Joan Rivers. Get over it. What do you think Joan would say today about uh, Mr. Trump? Oh, she'd love him. It's her <laughs> boss. Are you kidding? She'd be out there stomping for him. You think she would be? Absolutely. Or do you Absolutely. think it's just because she won that show? Donald, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Call me. Well, do lunch. You yes. could relive the whole Apprentice show with him. Yes, yes. I think he was very influential uh, in giving her career another boost. He, not that she really needed it, but it was a lot of TV right. time, a lot of publicity, and for her to win that, it was wonderful. Because she was still doing the Fashion Police then, I think, yes, when she was I love that. Fashion Police. Yeah, and I guess the show's not on anymore. Are they no, revamping it? Comes it? On with special occasions, like they had the uh, Golden Globe. Oh, okay. And then they'll have uh, the the Critics' Choice right. Awards, and now they'll have the Oscars coming up, and it comes on. And uh, Melissa is the head. Oh, she's now running it. Running it. Right. Now, did you see her in that movie Joy? No. They used her. Wait, no. Who? Own. I saw Joy. Right, and she was uh, Joan Rivers. Oh, I think I did see that. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I'm remembering I that, they that have bit. Me. Yeah, I, I can't they believe they didn't. Either did I. Oh, my God, I. you should have called them. Oh, I know. And gave it to them when you saw when, that. When I talk to them next time, yeah. I will. Yeah, will. we're going to give David O. Russell a call right now to oh, discuss I, you it. Do that. You do that. I, I'll stand right here and listen. <laughs> when they send the police for you, I'll be exiting. Right, well, I... <laughs> I don't think the police are coming. Um, I don't know that they're watching the Stalker! show right now. <laughs> what? Um, I wonder if we invited Melissa here right now, how she would be if she saw you. Do you think she'd be like on and like in the improv yes. of the moment or she'd be? Yes. yes. She yes. would be. Yes. Yes. I had gotten a call from a um, Las Vegas agent. Uh-huh who I did not know, and I asked, how how'd you get my name and number? And uh, they told me Melissa gave it to them. Oh, wow. Very so nice. I thought, whoa, that is a coup. Right, yeah. That's a coup. Because Very nice. And she acknowledges that I, you know, impersonate her mother and thought right. it was a decent job that she would even say, call this person out on the right. East Coast. And, and have you met anyone else who's done any impersonations of Joan? Oh, sure. I meet a lot of them. Like the like the Elvises. Oh, there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of them out there. Obviously, none as like, good as you. Oh, of course not. <laughs> of course not. Bless you, child. Bless you. But no, of course not. It's like you, uh, you know. It's like anything else. There are people that do this who are, you know, they put on a wig and they think, I'm Marilyn. I'm Elvis. No, there are performers. The impersonators are performers and people, and they do very good jobs. Right. And that's why you keep getting hired. Right. And people like you. But if you're doing it on a part-time basis and, you know, and, and you think like, well, you know, like Mickey Rooney, oh, let's get a barn and we'll put on a show. That's not happening. That's not happening. Trust me. You mean like, like the part that I played up in the Adirondacks and Sleepaway Camp? <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I, I, look, I'm keeping my opinions to myself. So, Joan, where can we find you um, for our view, viewing audience? If they want to go see you, they want to look at you on social media, where, where can we get you? Okay. The best place you can find me, I have a uh, website. Oh, oh, very nice. Look, there it is. It's lindaaxelrod.com, L-I-N-D-A-A-X-E-L-R-O-D. Dot com. You can find me on Facebook, Linda Axelrod, celebrity impersonator, Joan Rivers. Like my page, damn it. Like my page. Like her page, please, and, please. Uh, uh, you can find me on Twitter, Linda Axelrod. At Linda Axelrod. Yes, and on LinkedIn. Oh. Yeah, Axelrod. Oh, very yes. nice. Yes, I'm like very impressive. I'm papered all over. <laughs> I, I am. Very impressive. 
So um, I just want to thank our sponsor again, TRS 24-7 PR. You guys should call them if anyone is looking for any PR or social media needs. They are excellent. And um, Joan, Linda, thank yes. you so much for being oh, my, my guest pleasure. today. My pleasure. And I, I have something for you. Oh. One of my cooler cookies. <gasps> Please take oh. one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I hope that you like chocolate. And, I love chocolate. Um, Who doesn't good. love chocolate? I know. That's kind of what I figure. I mean. And, um, and it was great. Oh. Again, having you here. Oh, it was my pleasure. Mwah! Mwah! I had a wonderful time. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, everybody out here, staff and people, and the big audience, Melissa's, not, not Rebecca's Melissa, mom. Rebecca's mom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Laugh a little louder next time. <laughs> but, um, Thank you very much, and I hope to see you again. Me too. Okay. Oh, Mwah. Much success to you, darling. Thank you so much. Um, thank you again, Joan and Linda, for being on my show today. Um, and if anyone is looking for me on social media, you can find me at RebeccaBermanTV.com, on Twitter, at RebeccaBermanTV, on Facebook, RebeccaBermanTV, and on Instagram, Rebecca.Berman. And that's it for the cooler, folks. See you next time.